Just wait until you hear the way today's hero saves a man's life. It is unbelievable. This is one of those true stories that really helps put the faith back in humanity. Two complete strangers, one of them risks his own life in order to save the other in a subway in New York City right in the middle of the tracks, while a subway train is speeding right towards them. After it happened, the hero was asked why he risked his life in order to save a complete stranger. The hero answered and said, if I just stood back and did nothing, I wouldn't feel right in my heart. I couldn't just stand there and watch a fellow man die. The way that he did it sounds like it's right out of a Die Hard movie. I can totally see John McClane doing exactly what he did in one of those movies. But this actually happened in real life. Just wait until you hear what he did. But first, if you enjoy stories about heroes and what they did in real life to make them heroes, go ahead and hit all the buttons, make sure you're subscribed and you've got on your notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. And now for today's hero. On February 6th, 1957, a child named Wesley Autry was born. Wesley pretty much grew up on a farm in Alabama for the first 12 years of his life. Wesley's mom was a godly woman. She attended church every Sunday and she raised Wesley to do the same. From attending church and of course from his mother, Wesley grew up learning to love God. He learned to serve God by loving others, by serving others, and by understanding the value of people around him. So when Wesley was 12 years old, he and his family moved up north to New York City. In the mid-1970s, Wesley serves a few years in the Navy, and after his service in the Navy, he moves to Harlem and becomes a construction worker. He's just a normal, average New Yorker who works hard in order to support his family. He has a few children, and by January 2nd of 2007, he's called Harlem his home for 30 years. And it was on this day that Wesley would make quick decisions and take actions that would end up saving a man's life and turning him into a highly regarded international hero. So on January 2nd of 2007, Wesley is headed to work to his construction job. But before he can go to work, he has his two young daughters with him that are four years old and six years old, Sashi and Shukia, respectively. In order for Wesley to go to work, he needs to drop them off with their mother, who would be waiting for them on 14th Street. So as they're on their way to meet the girl's mother via the subway system, they're waiting for the next subway train at the 137th Street City College Station in Manhattan. There's a good-sized crowd there also waiting for their subway train, between 80 and 100 people on the platform. At about 12.45 p.m., Wesley notices a young man who falls to the ground and starts having a seizure right there in the middle of the platform. This young man was a 20-year-old film student named Cameron Hollopetter. Most of the other people that were standing there on the platform of the subway station were really busy. They were looking at their watches because they had places to be. And so there's not that many people who even noticed that there's a man here having a seizure on the platform. But Wesley noticed. And when he saw this happening, he immediately rushed over to Cameron to help him. In addition to Wesley, there were two more ladies who also noticed this and hurried over in order to help. And these people who are rushing to Cameron's aid, they didn't know each other at all. They were complete strangers. They had never seen each other. But to these people, that didn't matter. So when Wesley gets over to Cameron when he's in the middle of his seizure, he sees that his jaw is clenched tightly and there's saliva coming out of the side of his mouth. And Wesley started worrying that he may be gagging, he may be choking, and he may not be getting enough air in order to breathe. So worried that Cameron may not be getting enough air, Wesley borrows a pen from somebody nearby and Wesley uses his pen to help pry open Cameron's jaw and keep it open so he can at least get a good amount of air and take some breaths. Eventually, Cameron's seizure stops, and Wesley, along with the two women there, help Cameron to sit up. And when they get Cameron sat up, they let him rest his back on their knees so Cameron can regain his composure just coming out of a seizure. And then once everything seems to be okay with Cameron, they help Cameron get back up to his feet, and then Cameron continues on his way down the platform. But unfortunately, Cameron doesn't make it very far before he starts to have a second seizure. And when this happens, he's close to the edge of the platform and he starts to stumble a bit. And when he's stumbling there on the edge of the platform, he kind of gets his feet crossed and loses his balance. And he ends up falling backwards off the platform right onto the subway tracks. Wesley, he sees this happen and he can already feel the next train rumbling down the tracks at this point. This is the number one train, a downtown train, and it's already getting very close to the station. Wesley looks down the tracks into the tunnel and he can already see the headlights of this train as it's making its way around the last bend coming into the subway station. And he can see Cameron on the tracks once again shaking uncontrollably, just completely helpless. So knowing that this train is going to be arriving in a matter of seconds, Wesley knew that he didn't have a single second to lose. So without really saying much, he points to the two ladies that also came to Cameron's assistance and kind of just for them to hold his two daughters back and keep them safe. And then he jumps down on the tracks as fast as he can right there next to Cameron. He desperately tries to grab Cameron to see if he can pick him up and get him back up on the platform as fast as he can. But as he grabs Cameron's arms, they're wet. And Wesley's grip slips every time he tries to grab him and move him. 
because in between the rails of the subway tracks, there's a drainage ditch that has water going through it. And this is what Cameron fell into and made him wet. And so Wesley, he tries a couple times to grab him and move him and he slips and he tries again, he grabs him to move him and he slips. And every time he does this, he can see the train getting closer and closer. So with one final attempt to try to get Cameron back up on the platform, Wesley grabs Cameron's clothing and tries to get him up. But Cameron, he outweighs Wesley, so this didn't work either. And at this point, the driver of the subway, he can clearly see that there's two men on the tracks in front of him, as this train has now cleared the bend and is ready to pull into the station. And so when the driver first sees the men on the tracks, he blows the horn of the train to alert these men in case they didn't hear and try to get them off the tracks before the train gets there. So having failed several times to get Cameron off the tracks and back up onto the platform, Wesley knows that there is no possible way to get Cameron back up on that platform before getting hit by this train. So what Wesley does is straight out of an action movie. With the train still barreling down the tracks, speeding towards them, Wesley gives Cameron a bear hug and tackles him down into that drain ditch that's between the tracks and Wesley makes sure he stays on top of Cameron while Cameron is still in the middle of his seizure and Wesley makes sure that Cameron's arms and legs are tight to his body and not out over the tracks as they were before so with this split-second decision and lightning fast action of Wesley both Wesley and Cameron are in this drainage ditch between the rails just in time for this subway train to go right over top of them now the height from this drainage ditch to the bottom of this subway train is exactly 21 inches. And the height of Cameron with Wesley on top of him is 20 and a half inches. There was literally only a half inch to spare. It was so close that the knit hat that Wesley was wearing was grazed by the first car of this train. And Wesley could feel the hat on his head being pulled up because of the train. So when he feels this, he tries to get his head down even further. He tries to put it right next to Cameron's head down in the ditch. And everyone who's up on that platform, including Wesley's daughters, are completely shocked at what they just saw. They just watched this subway train barreling down the tracks and going right over top of two men. And you can imagine they must be fearing the worst. And even the six-year-old daughter of Wesley said that when she saw this, she thought her daddy just got killed. Now the driver of the train, he did apply the brakes as fast as he could and as soon as he could. But from the point when the driver saw these two men on the tracks, there was no way that he could have stopped this train in time. So underneath the train where Cameron and Wesley now are, with the brakes of the train that have been applied, you can imagine the extremely loud sound of these high-pitched screeching train brakes sounding off so loud just inches away from Cameron and Wesley's ears. It was so loud that Wesley said that what he really wanted to do was bring his hands up and plug his ears. But he thought better of it because if he did so, he wouldn't be able to keep Cameron safe. So instead of plugging his ears, he just bared it. Because if he didn't, he could lose control of Cameron, his arms could go wild, and Cameron could end up with some severe injuries. So he just stays as low as he can and as still as he can. And he waits for this extremely loud, annoying noise to go away and for the train to come to a complete stop. Finally, the train does come to a stop, but Wesley and Cameron are still underneath it. And even though all of this just took a few seconds, it felt like a lifetime for Wesley. And this is how much of a close call this was. Even though the driver of the train applied the brakes as soon as he could, all but the last two subway cars went right over top of Wesley and Cameron. And when the train stops, the people that are still up on the platform, they're kind of freaking out because they don't know what just happened. They're assuming the worst, thinking they just watched two guys get killed. So it's getting kind of chaotic. So Wesley, still under the train, he starts to yell out to the people to please be quiet. He's trying to get everybody to calm down and be quiet so they can hear him. So he's shouting this, please be quiet. And when the people start to hear that there's a voice coming from underneath the train, it becomes completely silent and the people just start listening very intently. Wesley then shouts out from underneath the train, hey, I'm a father, I have two little girls up there on the platform. Could you please let them know that me and this man are okay? And so when the people on the platform hear this, they're overcome with emotions and they start cheering and they start clapping that these two guys that they just saw a subway train run over, they're okay. They're still stuck under the train, but they're alive and they're okay. It's unclear if Cameron could actually hear what Wesley said to him as the train started going over top of them. But just as Wesley tackled Cameron into that drainage ditch, he said, Sir, look, I don't know you and you don't know me, but I'm here to save you. And please, whatever you do, don't push me up. But now that the train is completely stopped, but they're still underneath it, they're still not quite out of danger yet. They're both still laying in this dirty, mucky, nasty water. And the third rail of the tracks, which is what gives the power to the subway in order for it to run, 
it still has high voltage current running right through it. So Wesley's thoughts are now on that third rail. He doesn't want to accidentally touch it and end up getting fried. And Wesley understands that when you tackle someone, that person that you tackle, they want their freedom back. So it would be a normal reaction of a person that just got tackled to try to get away, to try to grab for anything that you can grab and get out from under this person who just knocked you to the ground. So Wesley, he's doing his best to keep himself and to keep Cameron calm. He calls out for police and firefighters and starts asking what he should do next because he knows that this third rail is still electrified. And so the decision is made that they need to cut the power to this subway station. This way they can safely get Cameron and Wesley out from under the train and back up onto the platform. And when all is said and done, this takes around 40 minutes in order to get the word out to the proper authorities and let them know what happened. And hey, there's two guys that are under this train and the third rail is electrified and we need to cut the power so we can get them out. So Cameron, this poor guy who just had a second seizure, he starts to come out of it. He probably doesn't really have an idea of what just happened. And so Cameron, this poor guy that just had two seizures, he starts asking this question. He asks, are we dead? Are we in heaven? Wesley, he calmly answers him and he says, no, we're under a train but it didn't quite register to Cameron. And he asks the same question again. He says, are we dead? Are we in heaven? Wesley said that Cameron asked this question several times. And finally, Wesley decides to give Cameron a little pinch, you know, something that he can feel. And then he says to Cameron, dude, you're very much alive. And during the 40 minutes that it takes to get the power off, Wesley just starts talking to Cameron while they're under the train, just having conversations and doing his best to keep eye contact with Cameron and just talking about anything and everything just to try to keep Cameron calm. And once they're finally able to cut the power, it gets real dark because the lights go off too, along of course with the current that's going through the third rail. But now at least, even though it's dark, Cameron and Wesley can safely crawl out from underneath this train without the fear of getting electrocuted. And so once they crawl out from under the train, there's four or five people up on the platform to help Wesley, to help pull him back up on the platform. And there's four or five other people that are there to help Cameron and they get him back up on the platform. Cameron, he was taken to the hospital in order to get treated for his episodes, and Wesley went to go visit Cameron in his hospital room, and he got to meet Cameron's family there. From this event, Cameron just sustained a few scratches and some minor bruising. But without a doubt, if Wesley hadn't done what he did, Cameron most certainly would have lost his life. And you can hear it in Cameron's father's voice, whose name is Larry, just how grateful he was for Wesley in a news piece that was done about this incident. Mr. Autry's instinctive and unselfish act saved our sons. And with this happening the day right after New Year's Day, Wesley had this to say about his own perspective. What a better way to say to start off the New Year than to save save a life. Although I was on my way to work, I didn't mind being late. You know, I'm saving a life. But you risked your own. Uh, yes. Did, I did you know that going? Yes, I risked my own saving his. Even if I had a loss, my own. I mean, you know, I believe in life after death. It doesn't bother me. Wesley quickly became an international celebrity for his heroic actions that day. He was dubbed by the media as the Subway Samaritan, the Subway Superman, the Hero of Harlem, and the Subway Hero. He was flown overseas and back in order to speak. He made many appearances on TV. He was on a lot of morning shows and news coverages and talk shows. He was on with David Letterman and Ellen DeGeneres, just to name a couple. He was given cash rewards and his daughters, they were given some scholarships for school, as well as supplies for school like laptops updated every three years until they graduate. Wesley was even on the game show, Deal or No Deal. On the show, he made it all the way to where there was only three cases left, his own plus two others. The $25 case was left, the $10,000 case was left, and the $1 million case was still left at this point. He was given an offer of $305,000, which he turned down. The very next round, he would open the $1 million case, eliminating that. Ultimately, he went the entire way and he ended up going home with his own case, which was only $25. But he was then given on the show a brand new Jeep Patriot, which was actually the second Jeep Patriot that he was awarded on TV. There were episodes of TV shows that were made about Wesley and what he did. There was an episode of House MD from 2011, and there was an episode of 30 Rock that was actually called Called Subway Hero, which a recurring character on that show emulates the heroic actions that Wesley did on that day. But even with his new celebrity status, Wesley still remained a very down-to-earth and humble man who loves his neighbors whether they're strangers or not. And he continued working his construction job, and he just retired from his construction work in 2022. In the humble words of Wesley Autry, he said, I don't feel like I did something spectacular. I just saw someone who needed help. I did what I felt was right.
Thank you so much for watching all the way to the end. I really hope you enjoyed the story about Wesley. In my opinion, the world needs more Wesley Autrys. Remember to make sure you're subscribed and you've got on your notifications so you don't miss any future heroes. Thank you very much again. I appreciate you and I'll see you on the next one.